this is Coach PDHPE with another Year 12 PDHPE video. You can find more information at coachpdhpe.com or at Twitter at coachpdhpe. Um, this is Core 2, Key Idea 3, How Can Nutrition and Recovery Strategies Affect Performance? And they're the three dash points this video is going to be looking at. So what an athlete should be eating and drinking pre-performance, during the actual event and also after the event. So let's have a look at a bit of an overview of the actual dot point. Um, in some cases, even for elite athletes, if you don't get your nutrition right, it can severely impact performance, as LeBron James found out in this year's NBA Finals. What happened during this particular game is the stadium's air conditioning went out during the event, leading to hot conditions inside the stadium and also humid conditions. LeBron James suffered severe cramping in the closing minutes of the game and had to ultimately withdraw from the game and he's Miami's key player and what happened they ended up losing the game because their key player was off the court during the vital closing minutes so even in an elite level they occasionally get the mixture the mix wrong in terms of what they should be drinking and eating before the event and it cost LeBron James significantly on this occasion you can quickly search that at YouTube by typing in LeBron James cramping NBA finals some examples of what it actually means to get nutrition right in terms of performance is this idea of carbohydrate loading. We'll have a look at that in more detail later on. Energy replacement during the event, and that often happens in the event of these energy gels. It's also recovery drinks after performance. An example there is the athlete who consumes a protein shake after the event and also fluid replacement during the event. And the example there is the marathon runner getting either a sports drink or some water into their body during the actual event itself. So let's have a look at the nutritional considerations for pre-performance or in the days leading up to the event and this idea of carbohydrate loading. Now where this is particularly important is in for events of endurance based nature. So this can be anything from 60 minutes upwards. But the, the good example here to talk, think about in your responses would be for the marathon, which is even for the elite runners around the two hour mark. And then for the weekend warrior, it can be anything up to four to five hours for them to complete the marathon. So carbohydrate loading is all about this idea of making the body's glycogen stores, which is the energy or the fuel system, at their optimal levels for the event. Now what happens in the days leading up to the actual event, say three to four days out, the athlete pretty much stops training. So the elite marathoner would just be going on a few uh, short distance runs of low intensity and then their diet would be have increased carbohydrate in the diet in the lead up to the event. The recommendations are somewhere around the, the amount of 10 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight. And that would then elevate the muscle glycogen levels to their optimum level. And what this then allows the athlete to do is to compete at their optimal pace for a longer period of time without the glycogen stores getting fully depleted. If the glycogen stores do get depleted, then the fat stores are used and they are less efficient, leading to a decrease in performance. So carbohydrate loading for endurance events is critical. Fluid intake is also important in getting it right, that the athlete stays well hydrated. So to do that, it's to begin each exercise session in what they call fluid balance. So this requires drink, drinking regularly throughout the day, leading up to training all the event. It doesn't mean going overboard. So it just means simply having uh, drinks with all meals and snacks and to drink small amounts of fluid throughout the day. And immediately before the exercise commences, consume somewhere up to around maybe 300 to 400 mils of fluid. And the best option for that is water. Now there does have to be one warning. It's for a, a medical condition called hyponatremia. And that is when uh, an athlete goes overboard in the consumption of fluid. And they can actually drink too much. And it can lead into some extreme cases to um, some pretty serious medical consequences. So it's all about getting it right, the balance. Um, in extreme cases, an athlete can suffer that condition. Now on the screen there is an example of what a typical carbohydrate loading may look like. I'm not going to go to it in detail, except just one idea to keep in your mind there is that athletes in the carbohydrate loading should mostly consume foods that are low in GI index. They, they are foods that are um, slower to burn in terms of uh, consuming energy. 
So let's go to now during performance, the nutritional considerations during performance. And it becomes particularly important during the event in extreme weather conditions. So at the Australian Open every year, tennis, um, often it becomes very hot and humid and getting the, uh, the correct foods and, and liquid into the body during the event becomes really crucial. It's also important in events of uh, that are in a long period of time and also high intensity such as triathlon, again the marathon and in, the, and in this case the Tour de France when they can be on the bike for up to five to six hours a day. So what, what does the athlete need to be doing? They need to get their hydration levels right and it's about getting it uh, the right balance, not drinking too much or not drinking enough, so just getting it perfect. If you do drink too much, it can lead to bloating in the stomach and also the athlete needing to go to the toilet during the event and that um, you certainly don't want that happening. So begin dr drinking early in the actual event and adopt a pattern of drinking regularly but just smaller amounts during the event. So this can be in the case of the marathon, they have drink stations generally every three to five kilometres during the marathon and drink, just drinking one cup of water so that'll get you 200 to 300 mils of liquid into your body and do that every 20 minutes. And generally speaking in the marathon, um, they'll give you the option of both water and sports drinks. But probably sports drinks are the best option because it's also going to go away to replacing some of your carbohydrates that have been lost. Um, glycogen depletion. So what even in the best case scenario of a perfect carbohydrate load, an athlete in an event longer than two hours is likely to suffer some sort of glycogen depletion if they don't get... Uh, if they don't consume carbohydrates during the event. And they can do that through energy gels, energy bars, actual sports drinks, and either in some cases uh, eating some either bananas during the event as well. And you'll often see that during the Tour de France, uh, the bike rider consuming some bananas. But maybe in the marathon, that's a little bit more difficult for the athlete. It's pretty hard to consume a banana while you're running at a, at a good pace. So a marathon runner is more likely to uh, have one of those energy gels which are rather easy to consume. Now the, the, chick, the, the, the trick to this is start uh, the energy gels early during the event, maybe get the first gel after about 40 minutes so you, you actually don't end up going into glycogen depletion. So nutritional considerations post performance, so after the event. Now the whole idea to focus on here is recovery and recovery is all about getting ready for the next performance um, and the sooner it's done the better after the event so pretty much immediately after the event is finished about getting fluid replacement into the body now you'll often see this at major uh, NRL or AFL events you'll see the Gatorade people come out or Powerade people come out and give the athlete now yes that's all about promotion but it is a, in a practical a sense about getting the athletes uh, fluid replacement happening immediately after the event. Now and again in extreme weather conditions an athlete can lose quite a substantial amount of weight and it's all about getting fluid replacement right. So the, the recommendations are for every one kilo of body weight that is lost during the event and in some cases that can be up to three to four kilos the athlete could consume should consume 1.5 litres of fluid and there's an importance here of the athlete weighing themselves both pre and post events so they get the mix right and for rehydration purposes sports drinks are considered the ideal so that would be um, preferred choice over water. I'm going to have a look at this idea of glycogen and muscle rebuilding. So athletes are encouraged to consume a high GI index type snack or meal that provides carbohydrates and and the recommendation is about 1.2 grams of carbohydrates per kilo of body weight um, immediately after exercise. This is especially important if the time between training sessions is less than eight hours. Now the syllabus um, on the right hand side requ requires you to compare the dietary requirements of athletes in different sports. Now I've focused on sports here of an aerobic nature, so endurance events such as the marathon, um, now we're going to focus against, um, compare that against an anaerobic type sport such as sprinting. So what are the dietary requirements for a sprinter for example? Now it's actually less critical, it's not as important as for um, endurance type sports such as the marathon. 
But I'll give you a few suggestions here for pre-event for the example of a sprinter. Now, it'd be really important for the sprinter to monitor their food intake in the days leading up to the event. That is, again, because the athlete will back off their training. They may have been used in a heavy training load to be consuming lots of uh, high food intake. And it, suddenly, if they uh, back off their training and they start consuming the same amount of food, there's a high chance of weight gain in the lead up to the event. And it's especially at the elite level, an athlete doesn't want to be doing that and consuming foods that are generally low in fat. During the actual event, um, some sprinters can have multiple races during the day, whether that be a couple of heats, semi-final, and then a final. So the athlete should be eating snacks and drinking between races. Uh, again, essentially foods that are very low in fat. And if races are close together in time, a sports drink is probably the best option. Um, Post-performance is where it's most crucial for the actual anaerobic athletes such as the sprinter, um, particularly after training sessions where tears can occur, so after a weight training session for example, where tears can occur, in small tears called micro tears occur in the muscles and specifically in the legs. Um, after they athletes run these micro tears, elevate the body's need for amino acids found in protein which go a long way to repairing the muscle that has been damaged. Protein shakes are an excellent option. They provide a rich dose of amino acids which the body can absorb faster. Um, a lot quicker than say consuming uh, say a chicken roll for example. So this can help enhance the speed at which your body repairs those tears, reducing the recovery time needed after your run. So that's the comparison between the sprinter and the endurance athlete. Uh, for more Utah PDHPE information, you can find it at that website there, www.coachpdhpe.com.